All right, so I want to talk to you about uh, getting creative about hitting your prospecting goals for the day. Getting creative about hitting your prospecting goals for the day. Uh, I am up here at the top of a um, parking lot at a mall in my local area. Malls are awesome uh, because it's really easy to hit your prospecting goals in a mall in a hurry. So let me tell you what I just did. Um, so I was driving back from the salon place that I was telling you about a minute ago. And I realized that, wow, that took kind of a big chunk of my day. And unfortunately, I don't have like eight hours to be in the field right now because um, I have some other things I have to take care of as the CEO of this company. So um, I thought I'm going to go into 20 businesses today, though, that's for sure. So uh, I just stopped here at the mall and I walked in. I walked into 10 businesses in the mall and there's probably about 50 or so in the mall that I could walk into. Um, I walked into 10 of them. And um, I could have just done the rest of the seven that I would have left, but I thought, ah, I want to drive back over and do some more on that street I picked out since I was already talking about that in the training. But um, I walked into 10 businesses. Um, what happened with those 10 businesses? At a couple of them where the owners weren't there, that kind of thing. I'll give you a couple examples of some of the, the uh, interesting ones I had. I'll give you three interesting ones that I had and talk to you about those for just a second. So um, the first one, I had a, uh, a um, nail and you know tanning place in, in the mall that does some pretty good amount of revenue. And I walked in there. Uh, there it's like Korean and so there was definitely a language barrier there so I asked them about it and they told me the name of the owner of the store is uh, Steven so I put that into my CRM database and then I created my uh, follow-up task because he's on vacation this week so that's really cool because you know that's gonna help me I don't look at that you know a lot of times salespeople are like oh that's gonna be a sale well you have no idea that's gonna be a sale or not but I do know it's gonna be a contact so now I've got the name of the guy so now again when I go back I put it in there for after Thanksgiving when I go back in there, I know I can just walk in and ask for Steven. Um, another one I walked into that's very promising, my best uh, one for the day actually, and, and the one where I believe I'm gonna sell, make the sale, um, is a guy I walked into, his name is Rick. And I'd actually met him before in his store like a long time ago. Um, but I went in there and talked to him. And I again, I looked over and saw that he, he has an old terminal. It's not EMV chip card ready. So I was talking to him about that a little bit, about EMV chip cards. I handed him my business card. And I told him what I'd like to do is I'd like to get him a bid. And, uh, you know, he told me that, hey, you know, I've got who I have for the rest of the holiday season. I'm not going to switch until after Christmas. Um, and so what I told him was, I said, okay, I said, I, I understand that. And so I agreed with him, first of all. And then I said, what I'd like to do is, I said, I really like to just go ahead and get the, the bid done during the month of December. And then I can come back the first week of January to actually present the bid to you once you're past the holiday rush. And so that was my pitch to him. Now, why would I do that when I'm actually trying to make a sale now? Well, the reason is because I want to get the statement. So I'm willing to say that to get the statement. Then when I get the statement, hopefully I'm able to show him some really good savings. And then I can come back to him uh, with that bid a little bit earlier, like right at the beginning of December. And I can say, hey, look how much I can save you over the holiday season. Uh, why don't we go ahead and put the new terminal in now so you can start saving money over the busy holidays, which is your biggest volume month. So that's going to be my little strategy there. Uh, so long story short, though, next action step with that one, he had just had taken his statements uh, to his accountant. That actually happens a lot. So when they say, I just took my statements to my accountant, I don't have one here. You have one of two options. In my case, it's really pretty close to the first of the month. So I told him I would follow up on December 3rd, which I think is like a Thursday or something, but I told him I'd follow up December 3rd and he told me he'd give me a statement at that time and then I can do a cost analysis. Or if it was like the 6th or 7th and I'd have to wait all month, I probably would ask him who he does his accounting with. And then I would ask him if he would mind calling his accountant to let him know I'm going to stop by. And then I would just run over and pick up a statement from his accountant with his permission. So uh, that's another way you can do that. Um, the third one I ran into that was interesting was a really large corporate uh, business. They have a corporate office in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, I am going to go ahead and call them and actually try to arrange a meeting for me to actually fly to Nashville, Tennessee and sell them. Um, I would not advise that you do that yet unless you're very, very experienced in merchant services. But what I would say is if you get somebody like that, feel free to call them, ask them who you would speak to to, to get a bid, get some of the information uh, in place, and then work with you know uh, your manager or whoever on that deal. Um, there's no reason not to at least push it forward, make a phone call, see what happens with it. You never know. Um, I doubt that I'll get that sale. Probably one out of every 50 times you get a sale like that, but it's always worth a phone call. So I'm going to actually call them. I have a list of calls for tomorrow that I'm going to make. So there's three prospects I had from my prospecting in the mall. Now I'm going to head back over to the street that I was planning to go on today that I've actually never even been on. I went the very first 
first one. And then uh, that took me on a trip over to the corporate office and on and on the day goes. So this is a day in the field. This is what it's like. You know, you never know what it's going to be until you get out there and, and try it out. And a lot of times your, your day is planned out one way. And then, you know, you just follow the prospecting, you follow the contacts. So, so far a good day though. I mean, I feel like I got a couple great contacts. Um, I've got one guy that I'm sure I'm going to sell sometime either in December or January. So I got my, I look at it like I generated my one sale for the day in the pipeline. I haven't closed it yet, but once my pipeline fills up, that's my one sale a day. One day I'm going to sell that guy. Um, and then also I've got my two big deals right now in the pipeline. I've got the Subway franchises. I'm going to start working on those some more. And then I've got, uh, you know, this other big one in Nashville that I'm going to call and see what happens with that one. So all in all, so far, pretty good day. Let's see how the rest of the day goes.